Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we're looking at eGPUs once again, and in particular, we'll be answering one question I see pop up from time to time. Do you need a Thunderbolt 3 port with four lanes of PCI Express 3.0, or does two lanes suffice for gaming? This question stems from the fact that not every Thunderbolt 3 port is the same. The vast majority of Thunderbolt 3 ports support the full capabilities of the protocol, in other words, four lanes of PCIe that use the full 40 gigabit per second available to it. Some laptops, in particular those in Dell's XPS line, opt for just two lanes of PCIe with reduced bandwidth, presumably as it's easier to design for this. We know that Thunderbolt 3 isn't the ideal protocol for external GPUs with bandwidth and latency concerns, leading to reduced performance compared to a pure PCIe connection. So naturally, those that have purchased or want to purchase a Dell XPS laptop are wondering whether the reduced bandwidth available to eGPUs through just two lanes of PCIe leads to lower eGPU performance than fully fledged four lane systems. Today, we'll be answering this question through benchmarks of popular games, as always, at Hardware Unboxed. The setup we've got is about as apples to apples as we can get right now. Representing four-lane Thunderbolt 3 laptops, we have the Razer Blade Stealth, equipped with an Intel Core i7-8550U and 16GB of RAM. And in the other corner of this battle, representing two-lane Thunderbolt 3 devices, we have the Dell XPS 13. Here we also have an Intel Core i7-8550U, and we do move to 8GB of RAM, but this shouldn't make much of a difference. The key factor here is we're using basically the same CPU, but one laptop uses four-lane Thunderbolt 3, and the other uses two lanes. The eGPU we're using is the Aorus GTX 1080 Gaming Box, one of the most powerful and economically sensible options on the market. The GPU in here is pretty damn fast, but of course, we aren't gonna harness the full power with either setup. That's just life with eGPUs right now, though, in my opinion, you can still get a decent gaming experience with one, depending on the title. Today, we'll be going through 14 games and comparing the performance between the four lane and two lane systems. I've also included results for other systems in the charts, but the main focus will be the eGPU setups. Also, I should point out that all testing was done with an external 1080p display. Hooking up a display directly to the eGPU provides the best performance, so we've done that here. Starting with Grand Theft Auto 5, here I tested at 1080p with the maximum detail settings. Both setups are playable with an average in the 70s and a 1% low in the 40s. However, the four lane setup is noticeably faster here. 2% faster in averages and a decent 9% faster in 1% lows. This doesn't take the game from unplayable to playable, but an extra 4 to 5 FPS is decent. Batman Arkham Knight can be difficult to play with Gameworks enabled, but both systems push a 1% low above 30 FPS at maximum detail levels here. Still, the four lane setup is faster to the tune of 16% on average and 10% in 1% lows. This allows the game to reach a 60 FPS average on the four lane Razor Blade Stealth. Rise of the Tomb Raider is normally a punishing game, and it's here that the four lane system holds a massive performance lead. In 1% lows, the four lane system is 60% faster, which is the difference between 20 and above 30 FPS in this metric at the maximum detail settings with DirectX 12 enabled. The performance lead when looking at averages is smaller at just 13%, but it's significant nonetheless. It's clear in this game that four lanes gives you a better experience. Deus Ex Mankind Divided showed relatively modest performance gains for the four lane Thunderbolt 3 system at 6% on average and 8% in 1% lows. The performance between each system here is similar at around 50 FPS on average and above 30 FPS in 1% lows, so I wouldn't worry too much about this game if you're planning on playing it. Hitman is quite CPU intensive, but we're still seeing a handy performance lead to the four lane system. Despite the Dell XPS 13 outperforming the four lane Razer Blade Stealth in general CPU benchmarks. Instead, the Blade Stealth with its four lanes of PCIe has a 3% lead on average and 8% in 1% lows. The game doesn't play well on eGPUs with a 1% low below 30 FPS at maximum detail levels, and there's quite a large difference between the average and 1% low results, which indicates some inconsistent performance. 
Watch Dogs 2, again, is quite CPU intensive, but there's not a lot of difference between the two lane configurations. The four lane system is 3% ahead looking at averages and 5% faster in 1% lows. Using the Ultra preset at 1080p, you'll only get just above a 30 FPS minimum, so it's best to turn down the quality for real gaming. Mass Effect Andromeda delivers similar performance whether you have two or four lanes of PCIe. Here the difference between the two is only 3-4% which isn't that significant and the game runs over 60fps on average anyway. One of the better experiences with eGPUs from what I've played which is a shame because the game itself is pretty disappointing. Prey is enormously affected by the lane configuration, it's the biggest difference you'll see in this set of benchmarks. The four lane system is a whopping 42% faster on average and 37% faster when looking at 1% lows. Clearly this game is quite bandwidth intensive as performance really suffers on the two lane system and that's a shame because the game is very playable on a four lane Thunderbolt 3 solution. Middle Earth Shadow of War shows a pretty typical performance advantage to the four lane system. 5% looking at averages and 12% in 1% lows. With the GTX 1080 gaming box, playing on the Ultra preset is possible, though I'd probably turn down a few things for gaming with the two lane system just to be on the safe side. Assassin's Creed Origins with the Ultra preset is not a great experience with the eGPUs, with both systems delivering 1% lows below 30 FPS. The four lane system is 7 to 10% faster in this game, but in general you'll want to turn down the detail level on both systems to get that 1% low frame rate at an acceptable level. Star Wars Battlefront 2 is one of the rare games where performance is actually better on the two lane Dell XPS 13, which suggests the game is CPU limited. Aside from some stuttering on occasion, the experience is quite good in the single player campaign with a 1% low above 60 FPS. Still, the two lane system is 7% faster in this test, looking at the 1% lows which is pretty unusual considering the other results. Things get back to normal with Battlefield 1 where there is no significant performance difference between the two and four lane Thunderbolt 3 systems, looking at the 1% low results. The four lane system is slightly faster on average, but the 1% low results tell us more, and here there's nothing significant to report. In Dirt 4, with the Ultra preset used again, we're seeing the four lane system outperform the two lane system by a decent margin. 13% on average and 19% in 1% lows. There are some odd periods of slowdown when playing Dirt 4, so be aware of that when you're you know, playing this game on an eGPU, but you'll be better off with a four lane solution here if you are thinking of playing it. The final game we're looking at is Wolfenstein 2, just to make those Vulcan fans happy. This is one of the larger margins in favour of the four lane system at 20% in both average and 1% low frame rates. The four lane system here runs above 60 FPS almost all the time, whereas the two lane system doesn't hit that level of performance. Using the Mindleben preset though, you're getting a pretty good experience either way. Overall, it's quite clear from the games we looked at that the four lane Thunderbolt 3 implementations do have a performance advantage in nearly every solution, although the degree to which four lanes is faster does vary. The smallest margin we saw was about 2-3% in games like Watch Dogs 2, up to 20% or larger in games like Wolfenstein 2 and Prey, and of course there was that one game, Star Wars Battlefront 2, that was a little bit faster on the two lane solution. On average, the situation is this. 4 lane Thunderbolt 3 attached to an eGPU is 10% faster than 2 lanes when looking at average frame rates and 14% faster looking at 1% lows. That's not an enormous difference, it's not a case of having double the bandwidth with 4 lanes and therefore double the performance, but those tossing up between a Dell XPS laptop or a competitor with 4 lanes of PCIe might be swayed by the extra performance of the 4 lane solution for eGPU gaming. That's it for this investigation into one corner of external graphics. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you later.